Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block Politics, Perspectives, and Players. So we're out here in your riding in BC. You're yes. contemplating your political future. What's next for Jody Wilson Raybould? Well, I am still the member of parliament for this riding, and uh, I'm going to continue to work incredibly hard um, for the constituents here. We have lots of really important issues that um, we want to continue to bring to Ottawa around um, issues, pipelines, climate change, affordability, housing, reconciliation. So I still have a role um, to play. Um, but in terms of like reflecting on where I'm going and next steps, I I'm going to continue to talk with my husband and my family and my, all of our volunteers that have been so uh, um, hardworking and to the constituents and see what they want. And uh, um, I've been really fortunate to have uh, a large amount of support and I hope that continues. Well, I know other parties are very interested in having you. In fact, I got emails from Conservatives who had filled out membership cards and wanted to know where they could contact you so you could cross the floor to the Conservative <laughs> Party. Elizabeth May came out. She said she would welcome you and Jane Philpott in the Green Party. Is there a political future possibly in another party for you? Well, I, I wouldn't characterize myself as a floor crosser. I um, signed up for um, politics federally as a Liberal. I believe in again, the values and the principles uh, that the party espouses and the work that um, we can do. Um, having said that, I am not uh, necessarily a, a partisan. I believe that there are huge issues that need to be resolved by all parliamentarians, by all Canadians, and um, that means working with Conservatives, that means working with the Greens and, and the NDP, um, because all voices are important. I, I do not necessarily believe my ideology aligns um, with the Conservative Party of Canada. Um, I have had uh, Elizabeth May reach out to me. I think that she's uh, um, someone that I'm happy to talk to, but uh, for me, I'm, I'm uh, somewhat of an, an independent liberal working hard for the people of Vancouver Granville. Is there any part of you that thinks, what if I helped Andrew Scheer win the next election? I... I I don't see myself as helping Andrew Scheer win the next election. I did my job as a Minister of the Crown, as the Attorney General. I spoke my truth. I stood up for what was right and my belief in the institutions of our democracy and the necessary nature of those institutions remaining independent and upholding the rule of law. I did what I saw was the right thing to do, and I believe that uh, if politics ever overtakes the right thing to do, then then we've lost already. Mm. Can we switch? Sorry. Sure. Go the other way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> <I'm still. laughs> You're good friends with Jane Philpott. Yeah. When she stepped down, a lot of people were surprised. What did you think when you saw that resignation letter from your friend? Well, I, I mean, of course, Jane and I, uh, I deeply appreciate her friendship. Um, I, I thought that she was probably the best minister in our government. And she and I worked together on so many important files that uh, touched Canadians from coast to coast to coast, one of those being medical assistance and dying. Um, so I know um, through our friendship and through working together that Jane and I share similar outlooks and views. Um, she, of course, was privy to conversations with me about what was happening, um, but she has her own agency. She's her own person, and she made up her mind what she wanted to do based on her principles. I was sad to see Jane. I'm sad that Jane's not a cabinet minister anymore. I'm disappointed that I'm not a cabinet minister anymore um, because I... Um, was really pleased to participate for three and a half years and get some extraordinary things done. 
But having said that, there's lots of work that both she and I can do as members of Parliament and issues that we're passionate about. And we talked a little bit earlier about Indigenous reconciliation. That's one of the mm -hmm. main reasons I got involved in politics. And I believe that uh, every seat in the House of Commons uh, is important. And if we can look at um, those really important issues, but also how we make those decisions, how we do mm -hmm. politics differently and, and having that fulsome discussion and maybe work towards some consensus-based decision-making, um, our, uh, our public policy would be all the better for it. And you've been very clear about how you feel on the Indian Act. And Jerry Butts got up and testified in front of the committee that you were offered that and, and you didn't seem interested in it. Why not? When you've talked about how you feel about the Indian Act and that was put towards you as if it was an offer on a silver platter, how did you feel? Well, I, I was very clear from day one uh, about who I am and what my passions are and what I was advocating for with respect to Indigenous peoples. And what I was very clear about is that I couldn't be um, the superintendent of Indigenous peoples, of Indians under the Indian Act in this country um, because I could not minister to my own people. I am a strong advocate and I'll continue to be a strong advocate for creating the space for Indigenous peoples in this country to transform and to be self-determining, to exercise their inherent rights. We're not there yet, um, but I am completely um, passionate um, to continue on the work and the advocacy that that I've done in my career up to this day and to build on most importantly the advocacy that Indigenous leaders have been uh, um, working towards and wanting to finally see their mirror in the constitution of our country and, and contribute towards the country for the better. Did you ever expect that this story would snowball in the way that it did? <sighs> I, I could never have imagined being in this situation that I'm in right now. I certainly um, took great honor in being a Minister of the Crown. I take honor of being a Member of Parliament. Um, I want to continue um, to contribute and to be uh, in public service. That's how I was raised and I want to, if the people of Vancouver Granville want me to, to continue to serve them. And that's going to be a discussion that I have with my constituents and, and hopefully um, I can continue to fill my role. What message do you want to give to young women at home who are considering a career in politics? Um, I would say, and this is what my grandmother taught me when I was young and my parents is that um, your voice is important every young person out there that wants to make a difference that wants to get involved that's passionate about a particular issue um, to work really hard and to know that if you do work hard and you have a plan then you can accomplish anything you want that doesn't mean to say that there's not going to be bumps in the road or challenges or people who do not necessarily share your worldview but my worldview involves community, involves truth, and it involves ensuring that everybody works together. And, and that may sound naive to some, but that is um, the reality that my people have lived under for um, uh, millennia. Thank you. Thank you.